So good morning, everyone out there in internet land across the country and across the world. This is Yvonne DeVita and I'm coming to you from Binghamton, New York. And it is very dreary and cold today. Last week we had, oh, um, Zoo, we had some really, really good weather last week and everyone felt like spring was going to be here, but guess what? Mm, no, it, winter's coming back for a little longer. It's upstate New York after all. So this is Smart Conversations and I have a really, really special guest today. And um, Zoo, am I saying your name correctly? Um, it's like J-U, Jew. Ju sound. It's almost like Jewish. Yeah, yeah Jew. <laughs> Jew is um, coming to us from California, and we're going to talk about a film that she's making. Um, but before we get started, let me just, I, I'm going to read about you in, in, in her amazing journey, because this is someone, ladies and gentlemen, that I, I don't think she sleeps. That's what I don't think. You know. I tell people when I meet someone like this, um, do I think they must be an alien. So I don't know if you're an alien or not. But anyway, let me tell everyone about you. Dr. Zhu Zhu um, Shen is an award-winning film producer, best known for two Oscar-qualified, critically acclaimed animation shorts she produced. Ingrid Pitt, Beyond the Forest, about a young Holocaust survivor. And, and um, Ju, I'm reading some books about, about that now, um, oh. some like historical novel kind of books, and it's just, it's fascinating, but also frightening. Mm. Um, and the, the other one is, oh, that one, by the way, was animated by her 11-year-old son, Perry Chen, in 2011. So, so he's not 11 years old anymore. And Chang Yu's journey, is that right? Yes. Chang Yu's journey about her late husband's life, written and directed by Perry Chen in 2018. So Zhu is currently writing, directing, and producing her first feature film, a personal documentary, Journey of a Thousand Miles. And this new documentary is a 2020 Spring Roy, Roy Dean Grant film finalist. Oh, I want to add also a, a, a got another update. So it's the uh, 2021 fall Royal Dean Grant finalist too. So I uh, apply another round. So that's the latest. That's the latest. That's, that is really, really great news. Um, so you. Chang Yu's Journey film premiered at the 2018 TIFF Kids screened at 19 international film festivals and it won five U.S. film festival awards. Um, we have a link to that we'll be sharing on the blog and in YouTube. Um, Ingrid Pitt, Beyond the Forest, won three U.S. Film Festival Awards and was screened at over 30 international film festivals. <clears throat> Again, the link will be in the blog and on, on YouTube. Shen's love for movies started when she grew up during the Chinese Cultural Revolution when movies were the only mass entertainment available. In her former life, she was an award-winning biotech executive, author, speaker, and China business expert featured on national and trade media, including Fox, Business Week, China Central Television, Pharmaceutical Executive, and The Scientist Magazine. She earned her PhD in biochemistry from the University of Colorado. I love Colorado. People know I'm just, I just love Colorado. Her MBA at Cornell University Johnson School of Management and studied medicine at Peking Union Medical College and pre-med at Peking University. And I just, that is a mouthful just to get all of that out. You, you've done so much and you have achieved so much, uh, but, but this film, Jew, this film is it right now, right? Tell us a little bit more about this journey of a thousand miles. Well, thank you, Yvonne, so much for inviting me. And uh, thank you all also for your uh, truly wonderful, exceptional support to me as a uh, middle-aged beginner <laughs> in the film industry, transitioning from the world of biotech when I used to own my own consultancy. Um, but the, uh, the world of film and 
and not only producing uh, films for Perry, but also now as a creator, um, directing my, my first um, personal documentary feature, uh, that has been, I would say, the most challenging, but also rewarding work that I am doing, I have done in my life. Well, it is a really fascinating story, and, and I know a little bit of the story, but I'd like you to talk about it and tell it. And your son, your son is involved also. Mm -hmm. I, I really find, In both films, yes. Yes, it's so warming and encouraging to have a mother-son creating something together. And that's one of the things that, by the way, everyone, it touched my heart um, when I met Ju um, to hear about this and to see the story of what she's done with her son. So tell us some more, Ju. Thank you, Yvonne. Also, as you know, we both as mothers of sons, <laughs> we share a lot in common because we know how it is to be with a son. So I'll tell you a bit of the origin story of both films, Yvonne. So um, Chang Yu, my late husband and I, we both came from China, um, met at the medical school where I was studying. Then we both came to the U.S. in 1988 to pursue our PhDs mm -hmm. in uh, biomedical field. Um, then he um, did his postdoc at Stanford, and then we moved to San Diego um, and made it our home in uh, 2003. Uh, and he went to China in 2005. It was an amazing career opportunity of a lifetime for him to uh, be a, um, a lead researcher and professor at the uh, Guangzhou Institute of Biomedicine and Health, uh, which was funded, uh, funded and, uh, by the uh, Chinese government under the Chinese Academy of Sciences with guaranteed five-year funding so he could start his lab and be his own boss. That's what his uh, dream uh, dreamed about for many years um, as a leading researcher. Um, so it took us a while to make that decision because what it meant, Yvonne, is that our families will be apart. Uh, so he took Perry with him for a year when Perry was in um, uh, uh, before elementary school. So Perry came back when he was six years old. And so I was here because I took a new job as a head of business development with a biotech company in San Diego. So we had this uh, cross Pacific marriage. <laughs> it was, you know, challenging would be um, an understatement, yeah. um, but we somehow made it work because uh, for me, I really wanted Perry to have a US education because I felt his creativity, his um, curiosity is well suited for the more uh, encouraging environment, let's say in the US that where creativity and uh, independence, uh, independence in thinking and uh, endeavors are encouraged. And so, um, but then I became a virtual single mom because Chang Yu could only join us um, every two months, you know, he will be here home for uh, three to four weeks at a time and then back to China again for another two months. So it's a very, very challenging um, family life, but we somehow made it work for the first five years. Um, but he uh, was unfortunately diagnosed with cancer mm -hmm. in 2006. So about a year and a half into his five-year appointment. Um, so that time we had a, a really um, a tough challenge. Fortunately, his um, squamous cell skin cancer at the time when it was diagnosed was very limited, it's stage one, and very uh, treatable with 85% survival of five years um, time frame. So we felt um, that was sort of the good news among the, 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 the blow of uh, having been diagnosed with cancer. So uh, Chang Yu went through um, uh, radical treatment, removing the finger, uh, right, right finger in his uh, right hand, right middle finger. But then um, there is the crossroad. He wanted to continue to pursue his research because he mm -hmm. felt he barely got started. Um, I was really alarmed. I wanted him to come back to join us as a family because I felt there are more important things than career. But ultimately, it was his decision to continue. Um, so 
four years later, uh, he felt a lump in his uh, armpit on the right side, the same side. And then soon uh, through pathology um, surgery, it was confirmed to be metastatic cancer, mm -hmm. uh, lymph nodes, you know, um, yeah. that was with the cancer cells metastasized into them. Uh, so here, the prognosis would be very, very poor. And so that time, we both made a very easy decision for him to put the research on hold and then come back for full-time treatment because we felt in the U.S., you know, in um, San Diego, he would get the best care, medical care. And so from 2010 to 2012, we went through this uh, uh, really, uh, uh, it was just so so devastating to mm -hmm. see him decline in that period with a more conventional treatment of uh, radiation mm -hmm. and then chemotherapy. He just deteriorated in front of our eyes. Um, so at that time, uh, so when he was diagnosed, Perry has already started uh, working on this uh, animated film, The Ingrid Pitt, Beyond the Forest, a young Holocaust survival um, animation film in collaboration with uh, Bill Plimpton, mm -hmm. who's an um, Oscar, two-time Oscar-nominated animation legend. Wow. Uh, so we worked together and um, we were able to finish that film, me as first-time producer and Perry first-time animator. And the film went on to qualify for an Oscar amongst our you know, family um, trauma and challenges. Uh, the first year was not the worst, but the next year it was uh, really, really terrible. Um, so upon learning that Chang Yu now had two weeks to live from his oncologist, oh my God. Perry at 11 years old at the time told me, said, mom, or 12 years old at the time, he said, mom, I think now I'm ready to, animate daddy's story because he's done Ingrid Pitt he knew how to yes. animate mm -hmm. and so he said I really want to give dad hope to live because I can show him drawings every day and um, when I heard that we were walking in our neighborhood park uh, that's our routine and I was just uh, speechless I was so so touched by my son's profound love for his dad, for Chang Yu. And I thought to myself, how can I not support this? I have to put in 200% of my effort mm -hmm. to ensure that he can get that film made. And in fact, Perry worked day and night to produce a one minute trailer that Chang Yu lived to see five days before he passed from cancer. Wow, now see that? When we hear a story like that, it's both shocking and um, inspiring because when this young man saw what was happening to his dad and he really wanted to contribute something long lasting, yeah. I think not just for his dad, but for himself. Yes. Yes, because for us, uh, Yvonne, the journey of making that film is part of our grief and recovery process because rather than just wallowing in despair and in misery and sadness, we have something positive mm -hmm. and inspiring for us to work on to remember Chang Yu in this way that would be so meaningful to us and that also would make us more productive, so to speak, to channel our thoughts, our memory you know our love for him into this uh, wonderful art that we can make together as mother and son yes and it's it's a it's the kind of art that reaches so many other people so easily mm -hmm. because it's the kind of thing we as human beings whether we're mothers mothers of sons or daughters um we are looking for those kinds of emotional connections to each other. And that's what I think this film is helping to do. Oh yeah, absolutely. And so Perry was just 12 years old, um, having graduated from elementary school. And then a month later, his dad passed. Uh, so it was, 
that's so difficult and devastating for both of us. But he was just incredibly stoic. He, you know, I hardly ever saw him cry. Mm-hmm. And then he continued to do extremely well in school. Um, so sometimes I would think like, I wonder how my son is doing inside. Mm-hmm. And, um, but I think having the film to work on and, you know, visiting um, Chang Yu's colleagues and family in China that we have done every summer uh, since the passing of his, um, you know, from, from cancer in 2012 had been uh, truly wonderful because it allowed us to learn more about Chang Yu's origin story. Uh, from other people's perspective, others who have known him, worked with him, and um, as part of his legacy, the students he mentored, they met us later on, and uh, we had reunion. It was just incredible. So, um, but that process, that six year of time from 2012 to 2018, this is a young boy's coming of age, you mm-hmm. know, from a, a you know, preteen mm-hmm. to um, adolescence to a, a young adult is the most formative years um, that a young boy would experience. And so he's going through all these changes in his body and his mind. And then um, also going through a rebellious uh, phase too, because mm-hmm. he started to resent me for all the years of my being um, the so called tiger mom without. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> being aware of it in my earlier days, you know, get him involved in movie reviews and then animation, you know, dictating his schedule and mainly focusing entirely on animation and art and, and uh, storytelling and uh, making films, which he resented because he felt like he didn't have chance to explore other interests of his, which were very varied and um, expansive. You now he loved science, he loved psychology, you know, social science. And then later on in high school, he loved business, uh, economics. Mm-hmm. So all these subjects, um, psychology. And so he felt like, you know, what I made him um, to do to focus on strictly um, animation and filmmaking was very um, constrictive. And he resented that. Mm-hmm. So we had these... Uh, tug of war, you know, is over control of um, who is the the true filmmaker here. He's a director and writer and um, um, editor and storyboard artist and character designer. I am the uh, uh, producer and executive producer, meaning raising money, you know, Mm. to get the budget for us to hire animator, background artists, and so forth, Mm -hmm. a musician um, and composer. So um, we had this uh, true, you know, epic tug of war. You know, there are times that he threatened to quit many, many times. Mm -hmm. And then I just felt this despair because for me, we took money from our friends and family, colleagues of Chang Yu and friends of ours who really wanted to support us in this uh, wonderful film that honor Chang Yu's life. And yet um, I felt like I'm not the artist. I cannot physically <laughs> make the animation happen. If Perry doesn't want to do it, I'm powerless. So I felt this. Yes, you do. Yeah, it was just this desperation. I felt like my professional um, you know, image and my professional reputations on the line you know I can't afford to you know collect the funds and support from people and then with nothing in return so I just uh couldn't uh I we were just at a standstill and so what was really um valuable and extremely helpful to us um Yvonne is that we were able to uh, connect with this wonderful um, personal development coach by the name of Walker Clark through a dear girlfriend of mine here in San Diego who worked with him. So Walker um, really, I felt in a lot of ways saved our project, but more importantly, he helped us see each other as who we are as people. You know, I saw 
Perry as my son, in addition to this talented young artist and filmmaker, because his well-being became more important to me over time when I saw past his accomplishment and saw him more than a vehicle for accomplishments and accolades um, and for my vanity. But more importantly, he's my son that I dearly, dearly love. And I want him to be happy. I want him to do what he wants to love and not to feel like he's forced with no other option. Right. Um, so I think Yvonne, it was a time when Walker asked me this really um, tough question. When Perry again threatened to quit, he just felt like this heavy burden <laughs> having to finish the film. So Walker said to me, he said, Ju, I want to ask you, if you have to make a choice between finishing the film and your son, Perry's happiness, how would you choose? Wow. It took me a long time. It wasn't an easy choice because instinctively, mm -hmm. you know, I'm the uh, high achiever and I see my son as that too. So, and I want to be able to deliver that on our promise to our supporters and to Chang Yu too. Uh, so, but then I had to do some soul searching. When I thought hard and deep about what does it mean to have a son and what does it mean to be his mother, I thought, no, my son's happiness has to be paramount. That has to be the first priority. So that was this breakthrough moment in our relationship. So I told Perry on his 16th birthday, I said, Perry, remember I told you before, time and time again, we have to finish the film. There's no other option. But today on your 16th birthday, I want to tell you that not finishing the film is an option because your happiness matters to me. Wow. And isn't that so hard for so many of us moms? Um, I mean, in, in the, when I think of what you were doing in making of this film, because you did have all these responsibilities to these other people. Right. So much wrapped up in not just the achievement, but being, people gave you money. Right. So somewhere, accountable. Yes, yeah. And you, you're accountable to it. So how, but, but then you, you realize that even that is not as important as your son. Exactly. And so this is what I told um, Perry, Yvonne, at that time, I said, Perry, I will support you regardless of how you decide to deal with the film. If you want to continue, great. If you think that not doing the film, not finishing it will make you happier, I will support that. But because we got money from all these people, I will ask you to work with me to return the money because I don't want to <laughs> you know, keep that when not uh, being able to deliver it. Mm -hmm. I said, I'll you know, work with you. We'll just contact all these supporters and just return um, the money they donated to our film. And ironically, um, Yvonne, it was during this time when I made a heartfelt decision to let go of control mm -hmm. and to let my son's happiness be the guiding light of my decision. He came around and said, mom, I do want to finish the film <laughs> and let's work together. Mm -hmm. And so then I said, wonderful. No, <laughs> I didn't expect that, but I would be more than happy to work with you and do whatever it takes for you to make it happen. And then, but we do need to, a deadline. So I, I told him, it's my desire to finish the film by your junior year in high school so that this piece of work that we worked on so hard that pour our hearts and soul into that that could help you in your college application. Mm. 
And so that's exactly what we did. We finished the film before um, school starts for his senior year. And we were able to bring the film back to China to um, show it to Chang Yu's mom, who was uh, 90 years old at the oh time. So she lived to see the film. Oh my and uh, it was the ultimate tribute to Chang Yu and all his family members, you know, his brothers, sisters, relatives, um, they all saw the film. And so I felt like this is um, so meaningful to us and then to the memory, the loving memory of Chang Yu. So this is just such a, a an overall um, story within a story within a story that we have going on here because in the end, what I just heard was so powerful because this story that you and your son worked on about your husband and the journey that all of you took and you took it back and showed it to his family and his his mother who was still alive and this is what this is what we as human beings have been doing in some form or another for centuries yes we don't do it as well now as as in the past and so something like this I feel is so powerful and so wonderful and I think that's why it's getting such great great um, responses and reviews tell us a little bit about how other people are responding to the <gasps> oh thank you thank you Eva. um well I am just so humbled by the outpouring of these amazing support from luminaries like Janet Yang, who um, was this uh, legendary executive producer of uh, the Joy Luck Club, mm -hmm. the bestseller adaptation from uh, Amy Tan, as we all know. Um, the book came out in uh, 89, a year after I came to the US actually. And so I love that book and I saw the film, was so touched by it. And that was the first um, all Asian cast blockbuster hit mm -hmm. um, from Hollywood. And then 25 years later, obviously we had the, uh, you know, the crazy rich Asians. Right, right, right. right. Uh, <laughs> it's my hope that, you know, my film will bring the awareness of our Asian American experiences that is so raw, authentic, vulnerable, that connects with families beyond race, national origin, you know, age and profession and all that, because it's a story just like um, the Joy Luck Club that will connect people to our shared humanity. And so Janet and I met um, in uh, 2010 or 2011 through a mutual friend who was this uh, wonderful LA Times reporter who worked with me on the piece on the um, US China biotech, um, you know, trends that I've been working on and, and writing about. And then um, she knew Janet from way back. So she introduced me to Janet when she learned about my work with uh, Perry in the movie world, movie and animation. So we um, got acquainted. And uh, last year in 2021, I reach out to Janet once uh, Perry produced this, um, uh, he edited this 18-minute uh, cut of a sample from Journey of a Thousand Miles with my direction. I absolutely loved it. And I felt like finally I have a piece of work that I'm proud to share with my idol, <laughs> my role model, Janet Yang, who also now is um, the governor of the Academy of Motion Pictures. Wow, I didn't has a that. platform of recreating Hollywood that would represent our America today with inclusion, diversity, and equity for all people. And I applaud her for having this amazing initiative and I want to be a part of it too. So Janet um, was among one of the first people to endorse my film for my, um, you know, the work in progress um, sample. Mm -hmm. And then uh, David Magdio, who is a, um, uh, leading um, publicist in the realm of uh, documentary films. In fact, 
he met Perry and me in 2011 when we were invited to um, cover this uh, film that he represented uh, by uh, Morgan Spurlock called um, Greatest Movie Ever Sold. Mm. Um, so he was um, uh, an incredible person in the documentary space. So we became friends and then we saw him um, all the time at the Oscar events because he often represents documentary films that are Oscar nominated. So we saw him, he, he basically um, watched Perry grow up <laughs> in front of him <laughs> every year. So again, I contacted David last year in 2021 when I had this uh, amazing cut from Perry he watched it, he absolutely loved it and felt that this is a film very worthy of support. And he's a Filipino American. So we have this like uh, the whole Asian cinema <laughs> uh, supporting us. And I'm so touched by that. And I have also been mentored by uh, Diane Kwan, who is an Oscar nominated um, documentary producer of uh, Minding the Gap, which is one of my all time favorite um, documentary feature films, a personal documentary feature. And so she's based in Chicago and she had mentored me as well um, with many others, you know, mentors like uh, Heidi Reinberg, who's um, also um, had been nurturing my film for over two years. Um, Doug Block, the founder of um, The D Word, uh, mm -hmm. had mentored me and consulted for me too, and many others. So um, this uh, pouring of community support, and many are female documentary filmmakers mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that I truly admire. I think the documentary field, uh, from what I've read and experienced, um, is actually dominated by female directors and female voices and perspectives, which is so refreshing. Wow, that's really interesting. I didn't know that. I want to go back to a couple words that you used, um, raw, authentic, and vulnerable, mm -hmm. and, and share humanity, because I really feel when I talk with you, and, and I mean, we talk beyond this, everybody, it isn't right. the <laughs> time I talk to you. Um, that's what I hear and that's what I feel and that's what I see and I believe that the shared humanity is so important and that the story you're telling is part of that shared humanity it doesn't matter whether you're the mother of a daughter or daughters and sons mm -hmm. um, it doesn't matter what nationality you are this is the story of a mom and her son and the dad and this thousand step journey that they went through and we all have our own journey to go through whether it's dealing with something um, health-wise or mental health or 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 just you know the normal things that families go through like you said right. with your son growing up um, so I feel really strongly that this is such an, a, a, a universal kind of a film for everybody. It's for dads and uncles also, everybody. It isn't just for, for moms and women. So tell us where Perry is today. Okay. Um, Perry uh, right now is in his fourth year at UC Irvine, which is about 70 miles from our home here in San Diego, which is a perfect location for him that allow him total freedom to be himself and lead his life without my influence <laughs> and but then close enough for him to come home whenever he would like to see me or spend time with me and also for me to visit him in fact that happens often I just visited him for his um, 22nd birthday celebration on February 25th we spent a whole day at food adventure. So he majors in um, international studies, minoring in Chinese language because he wants to leverage his um, uh, great skills in Chinese speaking, reading, um, and speaking and, and uh, um, conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, in the business setting, ironically, that's my own training in the past. Mm -hmm. I never thought he would be interested in that because I've been doing all the business things behind the scene for him. So I thought I would always be there to support him. But now he's more interested in the business side and using um, Chinese language, um, which is so important and prevalent everywhere. 
I, I'm not surprised and, and I just, we're getting to the end of um, our time, but I, I really would like you to tell us a little bit just um, what's up and coming, where, where do we, you go next? Mm -hmm. what, what can you share with us? Oh, thank you, Yvonne. So I will also say that, you know, um, when, when I was talking about making a Chang Yu's journey, but I'll just add that the making of journey of a thousand miles, that's my initiative, it's my baby. So how that happened was when Perry announced that he's making Chang Yu's journey, animating Chang Yu's story, I decided to pick up a camera to document his mm -hmm. process of making that film and also documenting his growth both as an artist and as a young boy to a young man. And so um, not realizing that eventually I will become a protagonist in my own film at Perry's urging, because he said, mom, you are just as important, if not more so than me in this film, because you've gone through even more dramatic changes than me, because I felt like I became a Zen mom after so many years and decades of being a tiger mom, not knowing it. But now I just feel that the Zen mom is so much better than tiger mom because it allowed me to be present with my son, to not have any expectations, just be there to support him with my love. And that allow us to grow from that place of tug of war to now being best friends, his words, not mine, best friends, mm -hmm. and also partners in storytelling and life with unconditional love and trust between each other. And what more can I ask for? That's the, any parent's dream. Mm -hmm. And this film is about the universal struggle of parents, male or female, you know, dads or mom. It's about how it's so hard for us to let go of our kids that we want, want to support them, want to see them successful, but don't know how to do that. So it's like a real life case study of how we did it. Yes, and that's, that's fantastic. And so you have um, up and coming interviews and we are gonna be sharing um, all of that because I, I will be sharing links that, that um, Ju has shared with me so that you can see in the trailer. And um, is there any deadline or expectation of when we can see the movie? Yeah, um, so Yvonne, my personal goal is to get the film into a really solid um, rough cut by the end of the year. Uh, with hope to finishing it next year. And then I will highlight some upcoming attractions for your uh, fans and viewers. So on April 7th, which is coming up very soon, at 4 to 5 p.m. online, I will be the inaugural speaker and presenter for the Cornell Business Showers, which borrows the concept of baby showers, but in this case, people are supporting not a newborn human baby, but a newborn business. Yeah. In this case, it's my uh, Bamboo Shoes Productions, my film production company and entertainment content uh, production company. And then uh, uh, primarily supporting the making and uh, uh, distribution of journeys, journey of a thousand miles. So um, that event, will be open to my fans to attend. You don't have to be a Cornell alum to attend. Okay. And we'll have information on my own film website, which is um, www.journeyof1000milesfilm.com. And 1000 is in numerals. Mm -hmm. So uh, journeyof1000milesfilm.com. And there will be information for people to register for this free event where I talk about more of the entrepreneurial side of making the film, which I think will be really intriguing for a lot of people. And then uh, on May the 3rd, I have a really exciting first time in-person screening in my hometown, adopted hometown of San Diego. So the screening will be um, in celebration of Mother's Day and also Asian Heritage Month of May um, at the La Jolla Public Library in partnership with the library and also 
the legendary Warwick's Bookstore, which has over 125 years of history and the longest running family operated and owned independent bookstore. And I'm just over the moon with uh, just the incredible support of the community. So we'll do the film screening of both films, followed by a Q&A with myself um, and a moderator yet to be decided um, at the public library from uh, 6 to 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Again, my website will have uh, further information about how to register for this uh, free event for the community. Um, but uh, also at Cornell University, we're planning for a university-wide virtual screening and conversation about my films in late May and date is yet to be determined. Um, so this is open to all alumni of Cornell University and their families and guests of mine. So that's really exciting. It's been in the works since last year. Uh, so I'm really thrilled. And then finally, I will be featured on one of the top five um, lifestyle digital media uh, in celebration of Mother's Day. So I will um, have announcement on my website in due time. So excellent. excellent. Well, everyone, all of that will be available, of course, on your website. And as I see the events coming closer, and I will definitely be sharing them elsewhere, everywhere that I can, so people can register and be part of the ones that they're able to be part of. But um, Ju, I, I just feel so in, in, invigorated and excited every time I talk to you because this is, again, we go back to the words universal and um, um, share humanity and things that that are vulnerable and when we share our vulnerable selves with other people then they feel closer to us because I like to tell my my authors that when you're writing your book it's a nonfiction business book but you have to bleed a little on the page because your your readers are bleeding in their everyday life and they yes. want to see you sharing yourself time. Right, right. And then I have to add this because I know your work, Yvonne, in helping um, authors and aspiring authors to craft their amazing story. So you were asking me earlier about, you know, what I would be doing after finishing Journey of a Thousand Miles. I would say that one of the priorities I have after that would be actually writing a book because we were approached um, <laughs> in 2009, like almost immediately after Perry had started writing movie reviews by a major New York publisher wanting to uh, do a book on both Perry and me, his uh, movie adventures and my parenting, um, you know, uh, food for thought and how, how did I work with him to achieve the success that he was on at the time. Uh, but then Chang Yu's cancer had to put everything on hold mm -hmm. soon after that. But I would say that over 10 years later now, we would have so much richer of a book yes. with all these stories that had never happened if we were to write that first book. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm really excited to um, be working on that book and possibly working with you. That would and, be uh, awesome. That would be yeah. fantastic and tremendous. But, uh, um, you know, the whole concept here can be multiple books because the multiple stories that you are telling, and we said earlier, a story within a story within a story. Um, so, you know, one book probably won't do it. You'll probably need more, but one is good to start with. So good to start, yes. Today, we have to wind up now, and we have to thank you, Ju, for being on, for telling us about A Journey with a Thousand Steps, and Harry, and introducing us to reminding us that we're all here for the same purpose, folks. We're all here, humans, to be connected and to talk to each other and to share stories and to help each other through the difficult times that come into our lives. And, and um, I know that this film is going to help a lot of people. Thank you. And it's through this film, uh, Yvonne, that I hope to heal and reconnect families. That's my ultimate goal uh, by making this film, not just for our own family, with this bigger purpose out to the world 
to connect everyone. Excellent. Well, thank you for being on, on uh, Smart Conversations. Thank you so much, Yvonne. And you are such an amazing friend, and I'm honored to have you to call friend. And I believe the same about you. This is Yvonne DeVita from Smart Conversations signing off. And, um, you know, we may have Ju on again because this is the story and a conversation that could go much longer. Thank you so much.